back, Rangers. What can I do for you? Happy to. Take a look. Welcome back, Champions of Milk, to a Wasteland 3 guide video. This is going to help you get end game power levels extremely early in the game before you've gone after any of the Patriarch's kids. And within, you know, about level 10 to 12, you're going to be ready to take on the final bosses in the game, at least gear level wise. There are three steps to this, but there is one extra optional step I'd recommend making a character with high charisma and focused on non-combat skills. He's going to need the Poindexter Quirk as well as the Bookworm Trait. And you're going to max their charisma, give them a little bit of coordination to move around, and then start focusing on intelligence. And this is going to maximize their skill point gain. And you're going to want to focus on lockpicking first, and then nerd stuff and mechanics kind of evenly second. And this is going to let you get into places that you're not supposed to be in early in the game very early. And that's going to complement the extreme power levels that you're going to get later on and kind of help you out on the back end. So you can also use this build to get around in the early game and get into places you're not supposed to be. I'd really recommend getting to four lock picking quick and going to the Marshall station and going into their lockup. There's some good weapons in there. Also in the Marshall Station is Lucia Wesson. I'd recommend taking her or a create a character and focusing their skill gains for the early levels entirely on barter. You're going to want to get barter to at least level 6, if not level 7. And then you will purchase the perk Antique Appraiser. And this is going to give you a chance of selling junk items for a whole bunch more of their value and that will count for stacks of items too. So you wanna prioritize having stacks of expensive junk items. I'll go over that later. When you get to the bazaar, there's going to be a dye merchant in a structure off to the right side, and you'll see the dye mixing formula on the screen, and this will allow you to get a pass that will get you into the bazaar where you're going to get access to a lot of good new weapons that will give you your next power level upgrade. And if you have that character focused on non-combat skills, you're going to be able to pump your other character's combat abilities, besides your barter character, of course, immediately. So they should be very high up already, and you'll be able to use these weapons immediately. But first you have to make the money. So once you're in the bazaar and you have your antique appraiser perk, you can sell all of your junk that hopefully you've been saving for the entire game. That's another thing. You want to be saving up your junk until you get Antique Appraiser, and then you sell it all at once in the bazaar. Then you buy back the junk items that are about $69 to $70, the very expensive junk items, especially the ones in high stacks, and you quick save and you sell again. And you look for that proc of Antique Appraiser where it'll say you've sold an antique for you know 3600 or whatever and you have to exit out of the shop menu to see that and then you quick save if it's good you quick load if it's bad and you keep doing this until you have a, enough money that you're comfortable with and you've bought everything that you want in the bazaar that will power up your characters the number I usually like to aim for is 10,000. I like to walk around with at least 10,000, and with this perk, that's no problem. Just keep that junk, the expensive junk, in your inventory, and you'll keep that money up. The next stop in the bazaar is going to be Quarax's Museum. Here you can pick up the Megascope sniper rifle by stealing it out of a display case while he's giving his speech. This is a perfect weapon for your non-combat charisma character. This is a sniper rifle that has a 100% hit chance and it shoots through walls. So you can have your character far back behind, you know, three walls and you can shoot this through cover and they can have zero skill in sniper rifle and it will hit. It also has energy damage, so it's going to puncture through armor. You know, even late game enemies, it's not going to matter what their armor level is. It's going to do some damage. And you're not going to want to attack with this character often, but sometimes you might want to get a shot off here and there. The last thing to do 
before you get your end game power is get your mechanics. So you have to finish the main quest line at the bazaar to get the mechanics as well as talk to Randy Get, a master level mechanic, and he needs help finding his family. You finish that and he will work at your ranger base and accelerate the development of your equipment. So as long as you have the armor, you'll be able to get the level two radiation shielding to get access to a really creamy vendor. Or if you haven't even beaten the armory quest for the, for the marshals yet, you can still get your level one shielding and get access to some incredible vendors. Uh, so I'm gonna go over those real quick, where these vendors are, and that's gonna be the last step. Once you buy this equipment with your infinite money and your radiation shielding to get to those vendors, you will have the power to cruise through the rest of the game, no problems, even on Supreme Jerk difficulty. The first vendor I'd recommend you hit is in Denver because there's gonna be a series of vendors here. Uh, so Nancy Forge at the Gipper sells some pretty good armor and weapons, nothing that'll you know blow your socks off, but she does sell one armor chest piece that requires some weird science that gives you a combat stim ability that'll give a character an extra two AP basically for free. So I'd really recommend picking that up and having at least one character with some weird science to use it because it's an incredibly powerful piece of equipment. You can get to the next area either by talking to some people or fighting them, but there is a way to get to here without fighting. And there will be a doctor here that will be able to give you cybernetic augments. He also sells cybernetic augments. So these are utility items that will give you some incredible powers. Some of them are abilities like the OptiLaser 9000, which will send a blast of some pretty moderate energy damage, which cuts through armor. Pretty good damage for the early game. Uh, and some other really good cybernetics can be bought here or found in the world. So I'd really recommend getting some cybernetic augments since you have the cash to spare. Just north of Vivisecto is the Vendomatic 2000. You have to pass a skill check to get access to its inventory. And it doesn't have anything too great. It has a utility item and a weapon mod that are pretty useful as well as a lot of those deployable mechanics items that I'd really recommend trying to use in fights. Since you have the spare cash, they can really turn the tide of battle in your favor. And then the final vendor in the Denver area is the best vendor, and the most important one to get to, the mobile outreach human, uh, the human outreach mobile gift shop. This guy sells some excellent weapons and armor that are basically end game level. And this is really going to give your characters a bump in power. So this is going to be your last stop in Denver before you go to the last vendor. And that is going to be Cheebus. Now this guy is out of control. You have to have the armory unlocked to be able to get the radiation shielding level 2. And some of the places this guy spawn are in radiation level 3 zones. But if you can see them, if you spot them, uh, in the southeast corner of the map, if you spot one of those Winnebago merchants, go for it and see if it's Chibis. Uh, he generally spawns once per playthrough, so when you find this guy, make sure you have a ton of money and you're gonna, you know, search in that sort of southeast area to the east of the bazaar. You can always go into another zone and leave. Uh, or reload your game, whatever you think will work. I've heard zoning in and out is a good way. And just explore that area until you find his Winnebago. And when you find it, buy everything this guy has uh, weapon-wise. So just some of the very best weapons in the game that are endgame or uh, some of even better than some of the endgame weapons you're going to find and weapon mods. So make sure you buy this guy's inventory and this will be the last step to get you ready to rule the wasteland at frickin' level 10. You'll be ready to fight the last bosses in the game. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you're having as much fun with Wasteland 3 as I am. So sub if you want more, and stay 